Hi, and welcome to the Sequoia Spotlight. I'm Kamel Fisher, and we're doing a roundup on the recent Q3 earnings season. With me, I have Mr. Dominic Carosa. He is the founder and chairman of Banksa Holdings, the ticker BNXAF. Welcome, Dominic. How are you today? Fantastic. Thanks for having me, Carmel. Very happy to have you. Please tell us more about who you are, your role in this company, and of course, touch on the overview of what Banksa Holdings is all about. Yes, certainly. Uh, personally, I've uh, been involved in technology since uh, mid-90s. Uh, listed my, my first company on the Australian Stock Exchange in 2000, which I ran for eight years, and uh, then ran an early stage venture capital fund investing into SaaS companies. I uh, got interested in crypto in 2013. Uh, the way my brain works, I need to do in order to learn. So I bought some Bitcoin, bought some mining equipment, and then six months later launched bitcoin.com.au, which is a website here in Australia, uh, allowing Australians to easily buy crypto. Uh, fast forward to where we are today, uh, Banksa, uh, Banksa Holdings, we listed it on the TSX and the OTCQX in January 2021. And it's been a, a fantastic journey so far. Um, in terms of uh, what the company does, and, and maybe before I sort of jump into Banksa as, a, as an organisation, just to talk about the cryptocurrency and the digital asset industry. Having been involved since 2014, it was very much retail focused. And what we've seen over the last couple of years, it's very much uh, the whole industry is growing up. It's becoming much more institutionally focused. Uh, we've got you know, major banks and you've got the, the micro strategies of the world now starting to buy Bitcoin as part of their treasury. And so as more and more people get involved in the ecosystem, um, you know, that really presents a, a big opportunity for Banksa. Uh, and so what Banksa does, it provides both the payment and compliance rails between the fiat world. And when I say fiat, I mean US, Euro, Canadian dollar world and the digital asset world. And we do this through our products called the, the fiat on-ramp and the fiat off-ramp. And so we help our customers and I'll talk more about who they are onboard more customers by dealing with all the payments and very importantly these days, uh, dealing with all the regulation as well, because uh, we have multiple licenses that allow us to operate around the world. And so we are effectively the fiat on-ramp and the fiat off-ramp to many exchanges, crypto to crypto exchanges around the world, like uh, Binance and Huobi and OKX and KuCoin and, and many others. And we help them acquire more customers because we deal with the payments as well as the compliance aspect. Wonderful, uh, such a comprehensive update on, on that. So thank you. And recently, of course, this interview is just to touch and add some light to the recent Q3 earnings report. What would you like to discuss and highlight for us where that's concerned? Yeah, the, the business has been growing uh, very rapidly um, over the last uh, 18 months. Um, our September quarter, uh, one of the key measures that we use to measure the performance in the company is a measure called TTV, Total Transaction Value. And uh, basically, that's a, a measure that we report on a fairly regular basis. And I'll talk about our September quarter as well as our November result that just came out um, a few days ago. And uh, for the September quarter, we did around um, $240 million of TTV, Total Transaction Volume. Uh, and, and that's basically the, the number of transactions, the, the, uh, the quantum of transactions and volume across our platform. And we generated you know, just shy of 10 million of revenue. Uh, and at the end of the quarter, we had about uh, $25 million cash in the bank. So a very strong balance sheet. Uh, fast forward to November. Uh, November has been, actually October has been great and November was even better, uh, was up 50%. So our TTV for November, uh, was around 240 million. So we did almost as much transaction volume in one month in November than we did all of the September quarter. And so, you know, that was up 50%, was up well over 500% on a, on a year uh, PCP basis, um, mm -hmm. November 2020 versus November 2021. So from a trajectory perspective that the business is really growing, um, there's about 160 people in the company spread all around the world because as you know, crypto never sleeps. Absolutely. And ever growing and uh, ever 
expanding markets. And to that point, how do you foresee the competitive landscape and how does banks, have, you know, try to stay ahead of that? Um, first of all, we're obviously got our ear to the ground with regards to, to new opportunities. Uh, but really, um, you know, our major point of differentiation is that A, we take a regulatory first approach. Uh, we actually own more vast virtual asset service provider licenses around the world than many of our competitors put together. And we also have the largest range of local payment methods. So we offer credit card, MasterCard, Visa and Apple Pay. But we also have a, a suite of local payments like ACH in the US, Interact in Canada, Poly in Australia, and the list goes on. And the reason those local payment methods are really important um, is that they offer a higher conversion rate. And so our customers like Binance and Huobi and KuCoin and Edge Wallet and many others like the fact that we can offer local payment methods in a regulated way, which ultimately means a higher conversion rate for them and for their customers. So our business model is really B2B. And the way that we make money is that we click the ticket on all the transactions. So the best way to look at it is it's like a toll road. As soon as you drive onto our toll road, we clip the ticket. When you drive off the toll road, we also clip the ticket. Um, so it's a, a transactional based fee. Excellent. Great analogy there. And it, it helps us to understand exactly how that works. Um, what are your annual projections for 2022? And if you prefer to just focus on the next quarter, um, we'd be happy to hear you touch on that. Yeah, we, we haven't um, provided any, any official forecast to the market. There are a number of research reports out on the company. Uh, suffice to say, we're quite comfortable uh, with, their, um, uh, with their outlook. And uh, you can actually get them at Banksa, B-A-N-X-A, Banksa.com. Uh, and click on investors and investors will be able to download some research or even just Google uh, banks of research. And really moving forward, uh, some of the key catalysts, obviously our focus is on increasing our TTV, our total transaction value, uh, but a number of other key catalysts will be adding more coins. Uh, we support about 50 coins uh, so far. Uh, we'll add more payment methods and then we see tremendous opportunity in the DeFi space as well as the NFT space. And so over the next 12 months, uh, there will be many new customers and deals uh, specifically around DeFi and NFTs that we will announce to the marketplace. Wonderful, we'll be keeping our eye out for that. So there's been recent mention of an uplisting to the NASDAQ. Can you touch on that as it's of course a wonderful positive move up the ladder there? Correct. Uh, right now, we're uh, listed on the TSXV and the OTCQX. Uh, we have already started work on our NASDAQ uplisting. Uh, we expect uh, the listing to occur sometime early 2022. Um, if I was a betting man, I'd say first quarter 2022. Um, in fact, we've just submitted our application to NASDAQ. And in fact, we already meet the minimum requirements. And, and we think that's a, a, the next logical step for, for the company. And, uh, you know, all I say to investors out there is watch this space. And my view is banks that belongs on NASDAQ. 100%. And I can attest to that because given our Sequoia platform, we have seen with transparency, you know, that you are indeed well eligible for that move up. What other future growth plans would you like to touch on? Uh, really, uh, in Australia, we, we have a, a, a sort of a, a comment. We say head down, bum up. Um, which is really just about getting out, getting on with the job. Uh, right. you know, continue, we, know, we know what we need to do. Uh, we've, we've really been building the, the key infrastructure, been building the internal capability, particularly from a HR perspective. Uh, for example, you know, the last couple of people are ex JP Morgan. Um, our head of compliance in Europe is the ex compliance uh, manager from the Luxembourg Stock Exchange, ex GC. Uh, from uh, Western Union. So we've really been at building out the team. And as we say internally, if we want to win the gold medal, we need to have a gold medal winning team. Uh, and so really in, in summary, you know, if you believe the hypothesis that Bitcoin, Ethereum, and this whole ecosystem is only going to continue growing, then companies like banks are that are providing the, the bridge, the payments and compliance bridge between the existing world the existing fiat world and the digital asset world, in my view, will be companies that will prosper. And, and if you want to put us into a box, 
you know, we're like the PayPal for the digital asset industry. Excellent. Wonderful recap. And thank you so much for being with us, Dominic. Um, very excited to see the progress and the positive momentum for banks or holdings. Again, the ticker is BNXAF. This is Sequoia Spotlight, and we'll be back soon with more of the Q3 earnings season roundup. Thank you.